Thinking of updating your existing countertops? Then call the countertop specialists at Fox Tops All. Fox Tops All is the leading provider of premium custom manufactured countertops, which we fabricate to your specs. No matter how large the project, Fox Tops All believes in exemplary customer service from the moment you walk through our doors until the last installed surface meets your satisfaction. Come visit our Mooresville showroom today and see for yourself why Fox Tops All. Welcome to Stressless, the recliner that lets you create your own personal comfort zone. With a smooth reclining glide system that eases your body into the perfect position for total relaxation. Plus full lumbar support and a headrest that adjusts automatically. Stressless. Relax your body. Free your mind. Come. Experience Stressless at Enbow Furniture in Cornelius. Sports Night is shot on location at Woods on South. Experience a one-of-a-kind Charlotte destination with Carolina cuisine created by celebrity chef Marvin Woods. Woods on South, 2100 South Boulevard. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Sports Night. We're coming to you from Woods on South, South Boulevard in Charlotte, North Carolina. A half hour of sports conversation, and we begin tonight with a guy who lives in Charlotte and in 1972 was a member of the Miami Dolphins NFL team that went undefeated. They're still the only team to go undefeated in NFL history. His name, Carl Noonan. Carl, great to see you. Hey, Bill, it's great to be here. Well, let's, let's start with the whole deal. This was quite a season. The Patriots with a marvelous run. Uh, not only do they win 17 games, they go through a regular season undefeated, 16. Get to 17 with a playoff win, 18, go to the Super Bowl, and got beat. And you guys, every year at some point, you become the center of attention when the last team loses. Did you ever think these guys would get beat? I tell you what, I think that uh, this year I was concerned a little bit from the standpoint that uh, they're an excellent team. Tom Brady was playing at the top of his game. Their whole team was playing at the top of their game. They had won a couple of the real close games, which you have to do, sure. however you win them. And however, in the back of my mind, I kept thinking, well, you know, they ran, got through the regular season undefeated, which is one accomplishment. But then you go to the next level, and that is you're getting into the playoffs, and then you got to get to the Super Bowl and win that. And what happens is that all of the teams that you are playing at that time in the playoffs and in the Super Bowl are at the top of their games too. And it just so happened that the New York Giants, uh, I watched that final game that where they played the uh, Patriots and got beat, they were starting to play at the top of their game. And so I knew it was gonna be a good game, but I did have some concern. <laughs> yeah, and I thought to me the, the game that they won, that they shouldn't have won, was the Baltimore game on a Monday night when Baltimore has them stopped on fourth down and their defensive coach is calling timeout. There's a flag later on that helps them convert on another fourth down. They eventually score the touchdown. When they won that game, I thought to myself, this is predestined. They're going to go undefeated, but the Giants took them out. Yeah, you're so right because, I mean, you know, when things like that happen, you think that, yeah, it is, it is destiny that they are going to go undefeated. But still, at the same time, they got to play the game, and that's why the game is played, and that's why the Super Bowl was played. And so, you know, I was at a Super Bowl party that day, that evening, and I had to leave at halftime because, you know, everybody at the party was, you know, rooting for the Giants, but they're so loud I couldn't concentrate on the game. So I said to my wife, Grace, I said, I tell you what, it's going to be a long half. Let's get in the car, get home, where I can sort of settle down and watch the game which I'm very happy that I did. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they were on track to do it. But the Giants, the key to that whole game was that, and the key for their previous wins in the playoffs was their defense was so strong. And in order to beat the Patriots, you had to get to Tom Brady and put the pressure on him. Because if you don't put the pressure on him, he's going to sit back there and he's going to pick you apart because he knows 
you know, once the ball is snapped, he knows what the defense is you're playing, and he's going to know where the wide, where the wide receiver or the tight end or the halfback, wherever it might be, is going to be open. He's going to get the ball to it. But if he doesn't have that time, well, then you know he starts to scramble. And I'm as I'm watching the game, and I mean from this get go, the Giants are putting the pressure on him, and he's starting to get happy feet. When he starts to get happy feet, that's bouncing around a little bit, and his eyes are starting to get big as silver dollars, you know, he's got some concern, so. All right, let's talk about your career because uh, you played at the University of Iowa. Uh, you were a fine receiver, and you joined the Dolphins in 66, is that correct? That's correct. And that was their first year. Right. I mean, they were an, ex they were an expansion team in the American Football League back in 1966. So what was it like joining that team? Uh, it, it was amazing because, you know, because it was the AFL and the NFL. <clears throat> I had the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I actually signed with the Miami Dolphins as a free agent, which, uh, you know, back then, being a free agent, you know, you were just like one in the, in, in the ocean, a little fish in the ocean, as far as being able to make it. So, uh, I had a friend of mine who played for the New York Giants, and uh, he was from my same hometown, and so I asked him a little advice as to, you know, negotiate my contract, you know, what should I look for and what should I go for? And one of the biggest things, he says, if you can somehow get them to put a clause in your contract that they have to keep you through the exhibition season, you know, that would be big. Because, I mean, you know, when you go to camp, you know, you, there's like 35 wide receivers. And if you get the ball thrown you once in practice, that's a great thing. So I was able to, Joe Thomas, who was, he was one of the big negotiators at that time, built the Minnesota Vikings early on before they're going to the Miami Dolphins. You know, I asked him, I said, about putting that clause in my contract, and he says, that's quite interesting. I've never had anybody ask me that before. He said, yeah, I'll do it. So he did it. And uh, so we go to camp, and sure enough, I mean, there's 35 to 40 wide receivers in there, and after the first week of camp, you know, the cut list comes down, and George Wilson was our coach at that time. Mm -hmm. And my name was on that cut list. And, and George says, Carl Noonan, Joe Thomas says, no, no, we got to keep this kid through <laughs> exhibition. So they had to keep me. And the last game of the exhibition season, I was like the number three wide receiver. Number one wide receiver, he was hurt. The number two wide receiver that was in front of me, he got hurt in the first series. We we're playing Memphis, Tennessee against the Denver Broncos. Of course, I'll never get this as long as I live. They had to put me in the game. They put me in the game. I caught eight passes, two for touchdowns. I made the team. So, you know, I mean, fate was there. So, yeah, thanks to that contract. Yeah, thanks to that contract. But it was very interesting because, you know, back at the Dolphins at that time, we trained in St. Petersburg. We stayed in a motel. They built us a makeshift practice field on the beach. We had to keep our equipment and all of our uniforms in our motel room. Now, if you don't think down in Florida, after about a week and a half, that room didn't sort of smell. I mean, you know, everybody would run air conditioning, oh, man. but we would have to open the windows. <laughs> but it was, it, those were, that was back in the days when uh, things were pretty simple. Yeah, and, and I uh, looked at uh, some of your numbers. I mean, you had a, you had a big year. Uh, you were an all-star one year. I think, what, 15 uh, touchdown catches one season? Well, actually, it was, it was 11. Le I, I, okay. led the, I led the league with Warren Wells and 11 touchdown passes. I had 58 receptions. Uh, okay. That was in 68. And that was my, uh, and I made all pro that year. And that was uh, my best year. Okay, and as you mentioned, uh, George Wilson is coaching this football team, not Don Shula. Shula doesn't come until 1970. And, but before that, I think it was 67, Bob Greasy's drafted. 68, you get Zonka and kick. Uh, they pick up Warfield. Gradually, you guys become a good football team. When Shula got there, what were you guys thinking? Well, you know, we had we had gone through all those years with George Wilson, and George Wilson was a players coach. And you know, he used to, he was buddy buddies with the players and loosey goosey and everything. And and but we didn't have a whole lot of success. And because not having a whole lot of success, we had those top draft choices. That's why we got Greasy and Zaka and Kick and Mercury Morris and all these guys, you know, starting to build up this team. Well, they make the trip, well, they sign Shula. Shula leaves Baltimore and he comes down. 
and it was like the light switch went on in the room. Dark room, light switch on, the light came on. I'll never forget the first practice we had with him. We're all sitting around and he's talking, he says, well, this is what we're gonna do. He says, everybody in the preseason practices twice a day. We're gonna practice three times a day. Everybody has four meetings. We're gonna have five meetings a day. And if any of you here in this field right now don't wanna do that, there's the gate and don't let it hit you on the way out. And that was the way he was. And Shula surrounded himself with just super assistance. I mean, my wide receiver coach was Howard Snellenberg. You know, Howard Snellenberg, University of Miami, you know, what he's right. doing in, in Florida right now. Monty Clark, I mean, he just, Bill Arnsberg. He surrounded himself with good people. Shula was the taskmaster and he let his coaches coach the other people, but Shula was a coach that coached through intimidation. It would be like he would come up to you and he said, Carl, you had a good game. He said, but on you know this one sweep we had, you had this crack back on this linebacker, you should have got him and you missed him, the guy made the tackle. He says, don't do that again or I'll trade you to Buffalo. <laughs> and of course, you know, going from Miami to Buffalo, you don't want to do that. So, I mean, he gets your attention right away. And he, uh, he, he was a brilliant coach. You know, obviously the finest coach, I think, myself personally, in the National Football League, because he knew how to deal to his individual players, to their strengths and their weaknesses, and get the most out of them. So, 72, you get this undefeated season, you beat the Redskins in the Super Bowl. Did you real, when you guys were running the table that year, was that, Something you talked about towards the end of the season, like, hey, we might be able to go undefeated. We can, we can accomplish this. Well, the interesting thing about it was that prior to that season, we had gone and played the Dallas Cowboys in the Super Bowl and got beat, and got beat pretty bad. I think it was 24 to three or something. We did not play well. We made a lot of mistakes. So after that game in the locker room. You know, of course, everybody's going, oh man, it's the wrath of God is coming down on us for Shula. He came into the locker room and he says, hey, we didn't play well, we made a lot of mistakes, we can correct those mistakes. Let's just focus on getting back to the Super Bowl and winning again. So that was our focus in the 72 season, was just to get back there and win. Well, as the season went on, you know, we won you know, we're 8-0 and 10-0. And, and so we're all sitting there and going, geez, geez we're 10-0. And at that time, we only played 14 games in the regular season. We're saying, it wouldn't be nice to go 14-0. You know, finish the regular season. A couple teams had done that prior and be undefeated. So we did that. And I still remember this today as if it was yesterday in the locker room after that win. We're sitting around and the guys are looking at each other and going, are you kidding me? We're gonna run the table. We're gonna be have a perfect season because our whole focus was to win that Super Bowl. And so, you know, we won our first playoff game. And at that time, the home side of the championship game for each conference was predetermined. So we had to go to Pittsburgh and play Pittsburgh Steelers. That's when they had Bradshaw, you know, the steel curtains, all of right. those guys. So we had to go up there and beat them. We were underdogs. We had not lost a game all season. We were underdogs to the Steelers. So we beat them. Now we're going to the Super Bowl. Play the Redskins. We're 14 point underdogs there. We're 16 and all. We're going, nobody's giving us any respect, you know. But once we finish that regular season undefeated, we as a team, as a unit, everybody felt that we were going to be undefeated. And as it turned out, we were. Yes, you were. And that undefeated record still stands today, the only team to do that. Carl, great seeing you. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you, Bill. It's been a pleasure. Carl Noonan, member of the 72 undefeated Miami Dolphins. When we come back, we're going to talk roller derby. Yes, it's back. And it's entertaining. Stay right there. Sports Night is brought to you by Inbo Furniture. Scandinavian and Contemporary Design. Fox Tops All, the Countertop Specialist. Call now and ask about our starting line selections. And by Woods on South, 2100 South Boulevard. Thinking of updating your existing countertops? 
Then call the countertop specialists at Fox Tops All. Fox Tops All is the leading provider of premium custom manufactured countertops, which we fabricate to your specs. No matter how large the project, Fox Tops All believes in exemplary customer service from the moment you walk through our doors until the last installed surface meets your satisfaction. Come visit our Mooresville showroom today and see for yourself why Fox Tops All. You don't have to be this fit to read Charlotte Health and Fitness Magazine, but let Charlotte Health and Fitness Magazine help you maximize your active lifestyle. Every month, CHF readers enjoy features on the best places to get fit, look great, and have fun. CHF is now available for home or office delivery. For a limited time, visit chfmag.com and sign up to receive your complimentary copy today. Welcome to Stressless, the recliner that lets you create your own personal comfort zone. With a smooth reclining glide system that eases your body into the perfect position for total relaxation. Plus full lumbar support and a headrest that adjusts automatically. Stressless, relax your body, free your mind. Come, experience Stressless at Enbow Furniture in Cornelius. Sports Night is brought to you by Embo Furniture, Scandinavian and Contemporary Design. 